untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Ultimate Mastery deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, which features a ton of the new Strixhaven Mystical Archive cards, including Brainstorm, Faithless Looting, we've got two copies of Time Warp, as well as the full play set of Mizzix Mastery as one of the centerpieces of the deck, a 4 mana sorcery that exiles target card that's an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, and then we get to copy it and cast it without paying its mana cost, also as Overload for 8 mana, so the goal of the deck is to eventually cast Emergent Ultimatum, either by discarding it and then copying it with our Mizzix Mastery, or we can potentially cast it by reanimating a Scholar of the Lost Trove using Unburial Rites, which we can also flash back out of the graveyard for 3 and a white, and then Scholar of the Lost Trove is going to be our eventual win condition, a 7 mana 5-5 five five Sphinx with Flying, that when it enters the battlefield lets us cast a target instant, sorcery or artifact card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and then exile it afterwards so if we have Emergent Ultimatum in the graveyard, Scholar can also cast it. And then Emergent Ultimatum, the 7 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names. We have to exile them, an opponent chooses one of them that we get to shuffle back into our library, and then we get to cast the other 2 cards without paying their mana costs. And Emergent Ultimatum usually wins us a game on the spot if we can resolve it, because the typical pile that we want to search up includes one copy of Omniscience, the 10 mana enchantment that lets us cast spells from our hands without paying their mana costs, one copy of Final Parting, which lets us search our library for two cards, put one of them into our hand, the other into our graveyard, and then the final card is going to be Scholar of the Lost Trove. So if we can search up all three of those cards, the opponent is not allowed to give us Scholar plus Final Parting, otherwise Final Parting just puts another Emergent Ultimatum in the graveyard for us, so they're typically forced to give us the Scholar plus Omniscience, otherwise if they give us Omniscience plus Final Parting, Final Parting can get whatever card we want, and then we can cast it for free using Omniscience, so they will typically have to give us Omniscience plus Skull of the Lost Trove. Then if we have any other Emergent Ultimatums in hand, we can start casting them for free. We've got plenty of card draw effects to cycle through the deck using Omniscience, so we can usually figure out a way to win a game. And then eventually we can start taking extra turns as well, using Time Warp or Alrun's Epiphany, which also makes two 1-1 one -one bird tokens. And once we get to take extra turns with one or two copies of Skull of the Lost Trove in play, it's not too difficult to close out the game. And then we also have ways to copy our Skull of the Lost Trove, which can also come up in our Emergent Ultimatum piles with a copy of Glasspool Mimic, or with a copy of Sublime Epiphany, which can make a token that's a copy of a creature we control besides doing some other useful things. So that's the basic gist of our deck. We're going to try to put Scholar, Emergent Ultimatum, and Unburial Rites in the graveyard, and then use those to good effect to cast Emergent Ultimatum. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we do need some early card manipulation and draw discard effects to put everything in the right place. So we've got four copies of a Brainstorm, the one mana instant, that lets us draw three cards and then put two cards from our hand on top of our library in any order. This is especially useful to shuffle some of our combo pieces back into our deck, like Final Parting or Omniscience, since we can put them back on top and then shuffle them away with Fabled Passage so we can still access them with our Emergent Ultimatum. Then we've got four copies of Faithless Looting. This is probably the most important looting effect in the deck. Let's just draw two cards and then discard two cards. Can also flash it back for two in a red. So this is perfect for putting Emergent Ultimatum, Scholar and Final Parting into our graveyard. We typically also don't mind putting Time Warp and Alrun's Epiphany in the graveyard. That way if we manage to reanimate a Scholar of the Lost Trove we can start taking extra turns as well. And then at two mana we've got a new Thrilling Discovery, which gains two life, and then we may discard two cards, and if we do draw three cards, and two copies of Cathartic Reunion, which is pretty similar to Thrilling Discovery, discard two to draw three. So another way to put our combo pieces in the graveyard, and find our Mystic Mastery and eventually Imperial Rites to combo off. And then we pretty much covered all the cards in the deck. The mana base includes four copies of Fabled Passage, especially useful with a Brainstorm, alongside one of each basic land in our colors. Don't really need black mana other than sometimes hard casting on burial rites, but the main game plan is to flash it back out of the graveyard instead. And then we've got four of the Jeskai colored Triome. We've got three copies of Sacred Foundry, three copies of Steam Vents, and then some of the fast lands with Spire Bluff Canal and Inspiring Vantage. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, and our hand is. Not ideal. We do have Brainstorm to potentially put Final Parting back, but we don't have a Shuffle effect to go with it. 
and we can't even discovery on turn two. So I think this is a mulligan. This hand's decent. We can put one Umburial Rites back. And then we're just looking for Emergent Ultimatum with our Brainstorm to then discard with our Cathartic Reunion. Although Scholar's good too, since now we can discard Umburial Rites and Scholar. And then we're still looking for Emergent Ultimatum. But we'll play a Triumph for now. Opponent on the red green. All right, so kick things off with. I guess we could reunion first and then hold the brainstorm for now, since we know for sure that Umbrella Rights and Scholar can go to the graveyard. If we draw into Emergent Ultimatum without another discard effect, we might regret casting reunion first. But we do have a lot of discard effects in the deck, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So our opponent Gruel Aggro. And uh, Clothis is pretty effective here as Graveyard Hate. So that's going to disrupt our game plan. So now what? They're probably going to get rid of Scholar. But if we can find Ultimatum, we can still put that in the graveyard. And then if they get rid of Ultimatum... We won't be able to Mizzix Mastery it, but then we can still reanimate Scholar and cast Epiphany that we can also discard. So we'd really like to find an Emergent Ultimatum here is what I'm trying to say. Alright, perfect. And we even found a backup Scholar. So we'll put back some cards here, doesn't matter too much. And then we can Looting. And then a discard Ultimatum. And if I just discard another Scholar, what happens? Then my opponent just gets rid of Ultimatum. So I think I should get rid of Epiphany. And then my opponent has to decide what to do here. If they get rid of Ultimatum, we just reanimate Scholar and take an extra turn with Epiphany, which is pretty strong. But if they get rid of Scholar, we can Mystic's Mastery now. So things should still work out. Because yeah, if we discard another Scholar, then my opponent just gets rid of uh, Ultimatum and Scholar doesn't have anything exciting to play. But now we should be able to combo off. So cast Ultimatum. And then we'll get Omniscience, Final Parting and another Scholar. Final Parting, Scholar. So we'll get Omniscience, and then we can cast a Scholar for free, getting back Elrond's Epiphany, perhaps. Well, they gave us Omniscience Final Parting, which is not really what they wanted to do, since now we can just Final Parting for two more copies of Emergent Ultimatum, and then uh, cast one of them for free. And my opponent concedes. So yeah, they had to give us the uh, Omniscience plus Skull of the Lost Trove there to have a chance, but our opponent was pretty dead here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand's pretty good. Just need to hit our land drops and perhaps find another discard effect so we can ride Scholar on turn 4, getting back Emergent Ultimatum. So we're pretty likely to find one of those. Now we definitely want to put Emergent Ultimatum in the graveyard so that we can also get it back with Mystic Mastery, which we just picked up. So I guess we'll go for Ultimatum Scholar. And then we can potentially also hard cast and burial rights for five mana. Right, so it looks like a turn for mastery. And we won't be doing much on turn 3. Opponent might be playing the same deck here. And yeah, they were on the play, so they might combo off a turn sooner. Play a Triumph. And we'll see if they have the Mystic's Mastery here. Mm, 
Nope, just a thrilling discovery, so we get to combo before the opponent. And we have another emergent ultimatum in hand, so if they're giving us omniscience, we should be able to combo off. Not expecting any disruption. So hopefully we don't draw omniscience for the turn or final parting. And then we should be in the clear. All right, it's go time. Opponent concedes. They probably should be waiting to see if we have some of the combo pieces in hand since they're not guaranteed dead. But as it turns out, they were on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And what do we think of this hand? We have mastery, brainstorm, no discard effect. So even if we draw into ultimatum, we might not have a way to get rid of it. So I'm not a huge fan of this. This is much better. And then definitely keeping looting, ultimatum, scholar. That way if we find unburial rights, we can get back scholar and ultimatum. So the question is, do we get rid of a third land or brainstorm? I think we get rid of third land and then kick things off with a triome. And then turn two, we can potentially both brainstorm and looting. Although we already have the two cards we want to discard in hand, so... We could also looting first. Opponent with a turn one mountain. So if this is a red aggro deck, we typically have a faster kill, but no play, so they might be something else. Alright, so do I want to brainstorm first? I think I just kick things off with a uh, looting here. And then discard those two. And then we can maybe end of turn brainstorm. Or we can just wait, brainstorm, and then thrilling discovery. That way we give ourselves a chance of digging a card deeper to find unburial rights to then discard with a discovery so we can reanimate scholar on turn four. So, another discovery. Yeah, we'll brainstorm now. All right, we've got the Mizzix Mastery, so that should do it. We want to keep Emergent Ultimatum in hand, so this shouldn't matter too much. Don't even have to cast a Discovery. I guess we took two damage to gain two. Another Chain Whirler, and it's mastery time. And we'll get Final Parting, Scholar, and Omniscience. And with an ultimatum in hand, we should be able to win here. Our opponent gave us Scholar Final Parting, so we want to click on Scholar first, then Final Parting, so that the Final Parting resolves first, and we can put another Ultimatum in the Graveyard. So, Ultimatum in the Graveyard, doesn't matter too much what we put in hand. Let's go with uh, Mastery. Cast Ultimatum. And then now... We can get Omniscience. And what do we want to get next? Another Scholar. Although there's no Ultimatum left in the graveyard, so maybe some Time Warp effects. Epiphany Time Warp. Or I can get my clones. Although I don't have any powerful spells in the graveyard, so... Two Time Warps seems fine. So we get to take two extra turns. And then we can mastery the uh, 
time warp again if we want to, or we can looting and then uh, discard another ultimatum that way. Or we can go right scholar. There's a lot of combinations here, as you can tell. We already have another scholar in the graveyard, so this should work. Get back scholar. Scholar gets back emergent ultimatum. And then emergent ultimatum can also get some of our clone effects or some extra time warp effects. And there we go, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We do have double ultimatum, but no way of discarding it. So I'll take a mulligan. This hand could be okay. Think we'll try it. And then put back Epiphany. And then I probably need to fetch for either a mountain or plains. So we'll go with mountain. Cast turn to discovery, discarding Unburial Rites Epiphany. And then hopefully pick up some more useful things along the way. Alright, now that we picked up planes, we could take a different approach, probably just play tapped Sacred Foundry, keep Fabled Passage for later, because if I fetch an island, I wouldn't be able to Discovery on turn two. Alright, it's gonna be a Dreadheart Butcher from the opponents. And picked up Steam Vents. I might want to play the Steam Vents here, that way if I draw into a Brainstorm, I can cast it and then still have Fabled Passage to shuffle afterwards. All right, there's ultimatum, so we would love to find another discard effect, so we can Mystic Mastery Emergent Ultimatum. Time Warp is not great, so I guess we cycle Trium now. And then at the very least I could Mystic Mastery Epiphany, but that's really not as powerful as going for the ultimatum if we can, so... Yeah, we'll just cycle Trium here. And then if we can find any of our remaining discard effects, we should be in business. Mayhem Devil does kind of punish us for sandbagging Fabled Passage, but that's okay. So we're taking six here. So yeah, we might not have time to combo off. This is maybe a claim the firstborn on Mayhem Devil to give it haste. Nope, opponent just hits us for six. But next turn we're still facing lethal. Brainstorm. So yeah, I have to go for Mystic's Mastery. On Epiphany, and then I can time warp afterwards. So I guess we'll start by fetching an island. Take an extra turn. We can time warp and take another extra turn. But now we're probably in trouble. So I need to be able to brainstorm into a Faithless Looting and a Mystic's Mastery. Faithless Looting, discard Emergent Ultimatum and combo from there. So it's still possible. I guess uh, Scholar would have done it too if we had a uh, looting effect, because then I could uh, Unburial Rites it back and ultimatum. So yeah, we really just needed a Faithless looting here, but we didn't find it, so now I think we're just dead. I guess we have our two Chum Blockers still, which can maybe keep us alive. So I should put those two back, and then I can cycle a Triome. But that's not going to be very helpful. And the next turn I can cast Color, but there's nothing in the graveyard to really get back, other than, I guess, Time Warp. Of 
Cauldron Familiar. Do they have a Witch's Oven to go with it? Still suspect that they have a Claim the Firstborn in hand. Voice Strider. Alright, that should also do it. They can kill our two birds. And attack for lethal. So unfortunately we were just one discard effect short of comboing off here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and our hands looks keepable. We've got Riot's Epiphany, which we don't mind discarding, and another discard effect. So if we draw into Scholar of the Lost Trove. We can potentially reanimate it on turn 4. Opponents on a Junt Sacrifice deck, perhaps. Turn 1 Thoughtseize. At least we didn't have a Mystic Mastery in hand, so... Could have been worse. So, Discovery... Or we can go for Double Looting. I think we still go for Discovery first, and then just discard one of the lootings. Can always flash it back. Alright, that's good. So now we're just missing Scholar or Mystic's Mastery. Trail of Crumbs. That's fine. Alright, so... Probably go with a flashback looting. There's a chance that if I just cast looting for one mana, I can draw into another two mana. Cantrip effect. But this is more mana efficient if we don't. Alright, so... Ultimatum goes, and... Probably another Unbarrel Rites. And then next turn, I wouldn't be able to combo unless we top deck Mystic's Mastery. And then we just need to keep digging for... Scholar of the Lost Trove to reanimate. Alright, there we go. So we should be able to combo off next turn. Uh, doesn't matter too much what we do. I guess Cathartic discarding Time Warp Scholar. So we have a Time Warp in the graveyard. Although there's already Epiphany. Alright, we drew into Omniscience, so that's a little unfortunate. So I wouldn't mind finding a Brainstorm to shuffle those back. So maybe go untapped Sacred Foundry, and then looting again. And no Brainstorm, but a Mystic Mastery. I guess we just get rid of Omniscience then. Sure. Or I can still get rid of Epiphany in case we top deck Brainstorm for the turn. Uh, does that make sense? That's fine. So if we top deck Brainstorm, we can put the Omniscience back into our library. So we can search it up with our ultimatum. If not, we'll have to adapt. Alright, so... Do we want to Unburial Rites or do we want to Mystic Mastery here? Probably go for Unburial Rites. Get back Scholar. Scholar gets back Ultimatum. And then we just want to get some clone effects, since Omniscience is not an option. And another Scholar is good too. So we get Scholar. We can get Sublime Epiphany and Mimic. So we basically get two Scholars here no matter what. And those can get back extra turned cards, so that should be game. So 
So we get to mimic, copy scholar, play another scholar, and we already had all the time warps in the graveyard. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Do we want to keep this? I have Discovery, which can discard Unburial Rites Epiphany. Mastery doesn't have the ultimatum to go with it yet, and we don't have a Sphinx to reanimate. And having Omniscience in hand is a little awkward, so... It's not the worst hand, but it's pretty bad. I think I still mulligan here. Alright, this hand is a little bit more promising since we have ultimatum plus looting, so we're just waiting for Mystic's Mastery. And then we can put the final parting back. So this hand really wants to find a Mystic's Mastery pretty much. Don't mind discarding Time Warp to have it in the graveyard for Sphinx. So kick things off with a looting. For opponents playing blue-white control with a bunch of counter spells, it's going to be difficult since we're trying to resolve some expensive spells here. Next turn, can discovery or we can flashback looting. Could play around sensor as well. Well, there's a mastery, so if that resolves, we're in business. Discovery, discarding Mimic, plus another Discovery. And then play Trium. I guess now we can Looting. So we need to find another Mastery. Assuming the first one's gonna get countered, but it did have Sensor. Well, best case scenario, our opponent taps out. And we get to resolve Mastery on Ultimatum. Even if they resolve Narset, it shouldn't be too much of a problem here. Right, opponent passes with a million mana up. So going for Mastery is unlikely to work. So I think we go for Looting. And play a slower game, play Triome. And then we can play Mastery with the one extra mana to pay for Sensor. And then we're going to try and find Unburial Rites. Because Unburial Rites is a way to potentially fight through counter spells, since that'll give us access to potentially two ways to get back Sphinx. Alright, so we want to discard Scholar. Already have an ultimatum in the graveyard, so don't really need another. So I guess Epiphany can go. Don't have the black mana to hard cast our uh, Unburial Rites if we draw it. So... There's Fable Passage, so now I can potentially hard cast Unburial Rites. Probably just play Fabled Passage and then go for Mastery. And then make them use a hard counter since we can pay for Sensor. They might counter the Ultimatum instead of the Mastery, so we actually exile it, which would have been a reason to still discard a second Ultimatum. Alright, Memory Lapse. Okay. So we'll have to try again next turn. Although they do have a Field of Ruins so they can shuffle away the Mastery here. So that's their plan. Alright, so we'll have to draw into Unburial Rites or another Mastery. Not gonna sacrifice Fabled Passage since that's still useful in case we find a Brainstorm. Alright, there's some Burial Rites, so we'll cast Rites plus the one extra mana for Sensor. And see if this resolves. And if the Rites gets countered, we can still flash it back. So our opponent's probably better off waiting to counter the Ultimatum that we flash back with the Scholar. 
but then we have a 5-5 five five in play. All right, another memory lapse. At least no field of ruin, so next turn I get to play it again. Get back ultimatum. Let's see if they have a counter for this. Nope. All right, so we get Omniscience, Scholar, Final Parting. They could have a cast out for Omniscience, but so it goes. We still get to cast Ultimatum with Omniscience, even if they have cast out. So click on Scholar first, and then on Final Parting. Final Parting Resolves first, gets us another Ultimatum. And then we already have Ultimatum in hand, so what else do we want to get? Mizzix's Mastery, maybe? Another Scholar goes for Ultimatum. Cast Ultimatum. And this one wants to get some extra turns and clones. And our opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. So, yeah, even against blue-white control, they need to have a lot of hard counters. Otherwise, we can eventually still combo off since their pressure isn't enormous. Although, if they have something like a Narset early on and can back it up with counter spells, they can make our life pretty difficult. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We're missing Emergent Ultimatum, but we've got a lot of draw discard effects here to try and find it, so I'll try it. Kick things off with a Trium. And then I might go double looting, since there's nothing I actively want to discard with Discovery, whereas looting draws first before discarding. All right, Thoughtseize gonna take the Mastery, I'm sure. So we'll have to find a replacement. Our opponent did not take Mizzix's Mastery, so they might have another discard spell here. And picked up Burial Rite, so kick things off with looting. And that's uh, essentially perfect here. Get to put those in the graveyard. And looting can put Burial Rites in the graveyard. Times two. So now we just need to hit our land drops and we'll be able to combo off. Extra ultimatum in hand for when we get an Omniscience in play. So even if they have another discard spell here for Mastery, we still have Burial Rite Scholar to get back ultimatum. So our opponent on a Jun Sacrifice deck perhaps, and there's the second Thought Seize as expected. So no real reason to flashback looting. I guess there is a reason we could put some time warps in the graveyard, but that also makes it more likely that we draw into final parting and omniscience, which we don't want to do. So I'm not sure if it's worth it to just flashback looting there. But next turn we can unburial rights. Ooh, Wither Bloom Command. So just deals two damage. Can get a swamp, not that we need it. Scholar gets back Ultimatum. And Ultimatum gets Omniscience, Scholar, Final Parting. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and what do we think of this hand? It's got the ultimatum, no mastery, and no Sphinx to go with the rights. If we had mastery instead of rights, I might be tempted to keep to try and brainstorm into a discard effect, but this seems too risky. And this is not amazing, but we can try it. 
And then I don't mind discarding the time warp to looting. So we'll keep that over one of the brainstorms. Alright, that's good. So ultimatum, time warp can go to the graveyard. And then next turn, we might go for a discovery to hit our land drops. Can maybe get rid of brainstorm, and then we're just looking for mastery. If they have a sensor, so be it. Alright, we wanted to get those sensors out of their hands, and we still have lootings to discard. Another ultimatum. So flashback looting. Dovin's veto, that's fine. If they're using hard counters on our setup cards instead of our payoffs, then we might have a chance. Now, Cathartic is a bit more painful if it gets countered, so we'll just go with a looting instead. And then... Double Brainstorm probably goes. Go for Discovery. Over Reunion. I want to keep Ultimatum in hand in case we resolve Omniscience. Alright, so next turn, flashback looting, still looking for Mastery or Scholar, now that we have Unburial Rites. I could get a Swamp now to maybe hardcast Rites, since I currently don't need blue mana. Also, either way, we would need to have a Sphinx in the graveyard first, so it's probably not going to end up mattering too much. Alright, there's a Mastery, so... Yeah, let's go for it. They might counter the copy here. They don't. So get omniscience, scholar, parting. And then put ultimatum in the graveyard and Mastery in hand. Or maybe another scholar. Gets back ultimatum. We'll go with omniscience, scholar, and maybe one of the epiphanies. If we go for Sublime Epiphany and they have a way of removing my Sphinx at instant speed, that could be awkward. So I th think we go for Alrun's Epiphany here. They might also have a Selver Wreckage in hand, which would make sense. And go for Time Warp. So yeah, the only card I need to play around now, I think, is Settler Wreckage. So we might not want to attack with everyone. If we can help it. So we'll send in... Scholar... Two birds... Alright, Brazen Borrower instead, that's fine. And then I can still flashback looting. And then next turn I can reanimate a Scholar with Ultimatum in the graveyard.
Still have an extra turn. We'll attack. Right, another Bracer Borrower. Get Scholar. Replay Ultimatum. And get some clone effects and extra turn effects. Still have an Omniscience to get to. So they can give us that one. So Time Warp plus another Scholar. And we can just cast Epiphany to, to copy our Scholar. Close to hard casting Elrond's Epiphany. And our opponent concedes. We could take an extra turn, take even more extra turns, and that does it. So, yeah, even faced a couple control decks here. So it goes to show that while the deck is pretty linear and counter spells obviously are good against us, you do need some pressure to back it up. Just sitting back on counter spells alone is not going to cut it, and players might still be getting used to some of the new interactions. If someone tries to Mystic's Mastery Ultimatum, probably better to let the Ultimatum get exiled and then counter the copy, as opposed to countering the Mystic's Mastery. That way, Ultimatum's no longer in the graveyard for future masteries. And if you do decide to pick up the deck, make sure to practice your Ultimatum piles, since that's a big part of mastering this deck as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd